Alright. This will be what if Deku had the abilities of the seven deadly sins? Alright. So we'll start off with Deku's birth. Deku, he was born to a woman named Inko Midoriya. And Inko Midoriya was a single mother. His father had died in a car crash before Deku was even born. It was very unfortunate. But Inko still wanted to have the baby. So Deku, he... This is him being born. So Deku, he's been born. And the doctors are just having another day, you know. Just another day at work for them. Nothing special. Nothing different. But Deku, unbeknownst to the doctors and his mother, is a little bit different than everyone else. But for a different reason than you'd think. So, after the doctors, you know, well, after done, after Inko's done giving birth, she's allowed to leave the next day and take Deku with her as well. And, uh, yeah. So, Deku, he's taken home with Inko. And, well, let's skip a couple years. Till about the age of four. And, Deku... shown signs of a quark yet he's stronger than average it's not anything monstrous like he can pick up cars or anything you know he can't do anything special like with a quark but you know he's special so Deku He's excited because today is the day that he's going to the Quirk Doctor. And he's finally going to find out what his Quirk is. Since he hadn't been able to figure out on his own. He thought it most likely would just be a minor strength enhancement since he'd noticed that he was a good bit stronger than the average person. You know, he's four at this point. He's as strong as, like, an eight-year-old, which is... Actually pretty significant, because four-year-olds and eight-year-olds have a big difference, you know. But yeah. So he thinks he just probably has a minor strength enhancement. But he would like to see, you know, if he actually has something else, you know, or if he's just strong, you know. So he's just happy and waiting. So, that goom... He goes to the Quark Doctor with his mother. She brings him there. And, sadly, he's told he's Quarkless. They go in, he's all happy, and he leaves disappointed. And, sadly, Inko can't do anything about it. Deku then goes home and watches videos of All Might, his hero. He ends up crying himself to sleep. And wakes up. The next day. Just wondering if that was all a bad dream. But he looked at his computer and the video of All Might was still up. And he thought, guess not. So, he's starting to feel a little bit sad. But he decides not to give up on his dreams yet. Not just yet. So, he decides that he'll train, and he'll become stronger. He went into school the next day. He ended up telling people that he was quirkless, but that seemed to make a couple people think of him as easy prey, or as a target, since some people in that school were weren't very nice, because after they got their quirks, 
they started to get egos. I will not name any names, but, uh, you know, one child with a explosion quirk may have been the leader of this. So, Deku, he's just dealing with it and trying to move on. And, you know, thinking about how he's going to train. You know. So he does that, and yeah. Time skip to his second, his, uh, the beginning of his last year of middle school. Deku had been tired of all the bullying and decided after a school day that he would just go and walk out in the forest. You know, since he was such so tired of it. He ended up finding this tree, this great big tree, and he climbed on it. When he climbed up there, this tree was giant. It had seven branches, and it was quite interesting. Each branch seemed to be slightly different in its own way. They even seemed to be colored different if he looked at it even a little closer. He wondered what it meant, but decided not to think about it, and that it was a great place to take a nap, as there was a nice spot in the middle of the seven branches that looked nice to sleep on. So he climbed up, and he climbed up a bit more, and he took a nap. You know, because naps are awesome. So once he got up there and took the nap, he woke up in this area. He didn't know how to describe it. It was like a metal, a metally field, a meadow, or a field with slight hills, but nothing else really defining it. He also saw a building. But, since there was nothing else to do, he decided to go towards it. He wandered there, and he went in. When he got inside, he saw a short, blonde-haired man in there, out front, serving drinks to a couple other people. Well, just to himself. And a couple other people in there. He saw another silver-haired man cooking in the back. And he saw a few other people, a few different characters, just sitting around drinking and or eating. He went in and said, hello, uh, where am I? Then... One of the women in there looked up and saw... One of the women looked up at Deku. This was a purple-haired woman. Uh, you know, she said, You're in Leonis. About 18 miles east of the capital. Deku then asked... Where is Leonis? Since he had no idea what it was and had never heard of it. The rest of them then looked over at him, confused. Since Leonis was one of the largest kingdoms, and pretty much everyone knew what it was, you know. Except for, like, very small children, but Deku, he was a teenager at this point. So, you know, we'll say he was, like, 13, 14. And they're like, uh, well, uh, there's no really better way to describe that. Then Merlin used, then, uh, the woman who said her name was Merlin and asked Deku to introduce himself. He said he was Izuku Midoriya and to just call him Izuku. She nodded and said, well, Izuku. I'm Merlin. So, 
it seems that you aren't from around here. She looked at him, and then one of her eyes, well, her eyes glowed red for a s second. And Deku thought, that's a weird quirk, wonder what it does. And she said, oh my, interesting. And then a talking pig came out from the back asking, you know, what was going on? And uh, Deku was like, what the fuck? Because, you know, that pig just talked. You know, he's heard of, like, Nezu and shit, but, you know, he's never heard of another talking animal. You know? And he's like, huh? A talking pig. Uh, that's confusing. You know? And Marilyn just said, yeah, don't worry about it. And, uh, now at this point, some of the other, uh, some of the other, the other seven, uh, people ended up looking towards him. I say seven because I include, uh, ah, shit. Why am I so bad with names? Uh, uh, Elizabeth in this. And, well, Hawk also looks at him. Okay, so nine, right? No, eight. Yeah. And Merlin goes to the short, blonde-haired man and says, Captain, I think we have... I think he's from another world and Meliodas looks at her it's like mm, that's weird he then goes over to Deku and starts inspecting him you know looking at him you know and he says looks like a normal person to me and Marilyn says well he's not and Deku, he's just like, all right then, you know, being confused. And Merlin decided to graciously take, uh, to, uh, tell Deku what her hypothesis was. That Deku had somehow been transported to their world, and that, you know... He doesn't know how, but, you know, she doesn't know how, but he was. And now he's here. So, yeah. And Deku's like, okay. What am I supposed to do with this knowledge? You know? Because, like, bro, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? So, he's like, so what you're saying is this isn't Earth. And then Merlin shakes her head, no. This is not Earth. And Deku said, so, you know, starting to panic, like, how am I, like, how am I supposed to get back, you know? I, I have shit to do. And she's like, I don't know. How did you come here? Deku says, well, the last thing I remember doing before coming here was laying down in a tree. You know, and you know that's it. And Deku's like, and she's like, interesting. And yeah, so Merlin takes curi uh finds Deku to be curious, so it decides to keep him around, and he travels with them for. About a week or so. And he's just, you know, like, what am I supposed to do here? And, uh, he then sees Merlin use some magic later on, you know, during this week. And he eventually asks what her quirk was. And Deku, and she looked at Deku like, oh, this isn't a quirk, this is magic. What is a quirk, though? Deku basically explains it's a special power that anyone, that only one, you know, you can only use it if you're born with it. And, you know, almost everyone has one, you know, like, 80% of people have them. I'm part of the 20% that don't, and, you know, 
I was wondering if you could teach me how to use that since it's not a quirk. And she thinks to herself, sure, you know, if you have the affinity for it, you know. And she's like, well, I'm a harsh teacher, you know, warning him. And he's like, that's all right. I'm fine with that. I just want to learn. And Deku, well, uh, Merlin then decides to take him under her wing, assuming that he can keep up with it. So she starts with the basic of magic, teaching him one element at a time. And it takes him about, well, time skip about two months. All right. And he's gotten a good grasp of a couple of the elements. And he's starting to learn some of the more intermediate magic. And, uh, yeah. So, he's learning this intermediate magic. And by this time, some of the other members have, you know, started to take interest in him. And, uh, Gother has also offered to teach him after Deku had asked him. Since he saw Gother use his magic, you know, rewrite light, and he wondered if he could learn that. And Deku, being from another world, didn't have some of the limiters that this world had, such as only being able to use magic you're born with. No, 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 no. See, his magical power, we'll call it copy. He can copy people's magical abilities if he sees them enough and is taught to use them. He could teach himself, but it'd take considerable more time. Though this ability is a bit difficult for him to use, he can still figure out other people's abilities. He's even sort of gotten a grasp, and I mean sort of, on Merlin her infinity power but he doesn't have it mastered or anything no for him once he activates a spell instead of it being for free to continuously keep it upholded it now only costs three fourths of the you know what it would take to you know hold so yeah but he's trying to learn Gother stuff now as well and Meliodas is finding this interesting and entertaining, so he decides to watch their training as well. Deku, he's just finding it interesting, and uh, yeah. So, he's going around, you know, it's time to give another four months. So he's gotten a decent grasp on Gother's uh, ability. He's not a master by any means, and it takes him some time. And someone very strong-willed could break out of it if they tried. But he knows how to use it, at least to an extent. And he's gotten to some intermediate magic with Merland. And by this point, King has found an interest in him. So has Bon and Deanne. So basically, everyone is now, you know, training him, since Deku had approached all of them, except for Meliodas and Escanor, those being the two most powerful. You know. So, he's just been traveling with them during this time. And, uh, yeah. So, he's learnt Merlin's abilities to pretty much intermediate, you know, levels. He can now use about half of her ability of, you know, basically infinity, you know, not having to use any more magic to maintain a spell. He can make it so he, once he casts a spell, it only takes half as much magic as it would to maintain it. Gother's ability, he's cut it down to about a second per arrow, 
at a time. So that's not that bad. You started to learn how to use weapons like King, also his, di his disaster ability. He basically has learned kind of like telekinesis more or less from King. And you know, it's kind of interesting. From Bon, he's basically just learning hand-to-hand -hand combat and how to use the nunchucks that he uses and his snatch ability. And from the end, he also learned more physical things. He also learned how to use that hammer of hers. And yeah, more training of the body. So at this point, Deku's already pretty strong. We'll time skip another, let's say, six months. So now it's been a total of a year since he's gotten there. He's mastered Merlin's abilities. He's almost entirely mastered Gothers. At this point, just very much diff very uh, difficult to even match him. He's learned how to use King's Chastity Fold, but he doesn't, you know, have something like Chastity Fold, but, you know, he learned how to use Telekinesis like that. And he can fly now as well. He's learned to use Bond Snatch to fight very well, and to use those nunchucks of him, of his. He's also learned how to use Diane's Hammer and her Iron Bodies skill, or Heavy Metal ability, allowing him to turn himself into metal. He's become fairly good at all of these, and he's basically, he's not quite on par with Merlin, but he's pretty close. He's at about 90% of Merlin's talent in, uh, what's it called, uh, magic. And at this point, he could probably go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the sins, with the exception of Meliodas and Escanor during the day. You know. So, Deku, he's pretty strong at this point. And he's going to continue his training. Now, another four months go by, and he's mastered all the abilities of the sins, except for Meliodas' and Escanor's. He then goes to Meliodas and asks him to train him. Since he had asked Mel, well, actually, he goes to Escanor and asks Escanor to train him. Since Escanor said he would train him, but only if he was the only one training him, since his training would be more physically and magically demanding than any other of the sins. You know, with the exclusion of Meliodas, but we'll talk about that later. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention <laughs> that since I'm not very smart. But he also uh, learned a few things from Elizabeth. You know, she's not a fighter per se, but he's learned some of the, uh, you know, magical abilities from her. And, uh, yeah. Like healing other people, for one. So, yeah. And Deku... He's going to be trained by Escanor, and we'll take a ye we'll take another year and a half for him to master Escanor's abilities. And it's not like he's taking it slow. No, this is fast paced. Like he is getting sleep, train, eat, repeat. Like that is it. And after a year and a half. He has the sunshine ability. He has that mastered. He could even handle Vinax Rita if he tried. Because of how strong he was. And he can basically manipulate fire now as well. Just as good as Escanor can. And he has the ability to activate the one... And with the same limitations as uh, Escanor, but it's not quite as potent. Like, we'll say it's about 
90% of, you know, Eskinors. Since, you know, you know, can't make him that OP. Well, I am, but you know, you know what I mean. And now he's gone to Meliodas. Since Meliodas also said that I will be the only one to train you if you get trained by me. And you have to be at least as at least complete training from all the other people and master their abilities before you even try to learn mine. And Deku, he agreed to that. So now he goes to Meliodas for training. And it takes him about a ye another two years to master it. And uh, the two years to master it that was just to master his like full counter and his typical abilities and his first level of you know demon marks now he's learning how to use that uh demon commander or whatever where he's covered in that black shit he's learning how to use that and it takes him six months just to learn how to use it at least basically so he's been there a total of five years now and he's completed training from all of them and one day you know they're going out on another adventure and Deku sees the tree he sees it the same exact tree and he says oh shit and then the others look back at him and he's like that's the same tree the exact same tree that I saw before I came here. And each of them are like, oh shit, maybe you can go back with it. And he's like, yeah. But how do I, you know, but I don't really want to leave you guys, you know? But I kind of got to go. And, uh, they're like, yeah, you do. So, he's like, alright guys, well, I guess this is time to head out, since, well, I can't just stay here and abandon my family back in the other world, even though I kind of already did. And they're like, we understand. And they each send him off with a gift from Merlin. She gives him a similar to her sacred treasure, uh, basically another spear that does the same thing that Merlin's does. From Gother, he gives his, he gives a, a secret technique that, you know, Deku already knew this, but, you know, he sends him off with the ability to shrug off any pain. From King, he gives him a copy of the Spirit to Spear Chastity Full. Which, yes, he can make, but, you know, it would be difficult. Bond sends him the ability to regenerate extremely fast. Deanne sends him with the... with a extremely strong hammer, like Gideon. And the ability to grow in size up to ten times his normal. Escanor sends him off with a similar axe to Rita. Divine Axe Rita. And the ability to grow like he had been trying to learn. But on par with his own at this point. Meliodas sent him off with his sword. And the ability to become a demon. Hawk gave him the ability to eat something. Like his magical ability, he gave him that. And uh, Elizabeth gave him the power to become an angel whenever he wished. And, you know, some of the magic he already learned, though. But, you know. And they all said to go. 
and this was goodbye. He said that he'll miss them all, and that he's sure they'll meet again, but in case they don't, it was nice knowing them. So, they, so Deku, he goes up to the tree, and once he climbs to the top, he sees all seven of them glow, all seven of the branches glowing, a different color. One, an ominous purple, one, yellow, the next red, the next green, the next white, then an orange, and then a purple-ish pink. He then saw a white light shining over him, and then he suddenly woke up back in the tree where he had been before. And Deku, when he woke up, he found on his body each of the tattoos of the sins. He found Meliosis' dragon uh, tattoo on his shoulder. Diane's on his left thigh. Bonds on his right abdomen. Kings on his left chest. Gothers on his right leg. Merlin's on his left arm, and Escanor's on his right uh, chest. And he thinks, well, at least I have something to remember them by. And each of them are colored like the tree was, as you can see on the picture. He then wonders, he then looks at himself and sees he's sort of like he was before, but he doesn't look as old. Because in the other one, he was 19 by the time then, but he looks like his 14-year-old self. But if he was way musclier than then. Like if you combine the two, but he just looked younger. And he thought, I wonder how much time actually passed here. Since, you know, it's definitely possible that there was a difference in time. It may have been f five years there, but it may have only been a day or two here. And he then decides to go home and see, well, you know, if he was right. He checked his phone to see if he still had it, but... Uh, he found that it was broken. And he's like, well, I guess that happens. Oh, well. So he goes home and he checks the calendar. And, uh, yep, it looks like he was out for only five hours rather than years. And he thinks, wow, that's a lot different than I thought. But all right. And, uh, he's home and he decides to, you know, you know, re-get accustomed to, uh, the society that he was in since in, uh, the other world. They didn't really have so many complicated things. He decided that he would be better off to, you know, store all his weapons in Merlin's one, you know, it can store stuff as well. All right, so like that ball, yeah, that one that uh, Merlin has, it can, you know, he used it as a storage space. You know, he could make another one, but you know, why bother? And since those things would normally cost a lot to maintain, but with the infinity ability, mm-hmm. You know, he's immune to it pretty much. Well, he doesn't have to drain his magic, even though he could probably maintain it for a couple of years without it running over, running out of magic. Since he has such high reserves at this point. But it doesn't matter. So Deku, he went and looked around the house, remembering everything. And he thought, well, I wonder what I should do now. You know, and then he hears the door, and 
he's like, oh shit, how am I supposed to explain this to someone else? Because, you know, he's aware of the big difference in his body. And he's like, I'll just wear baggy clothing for the next month or two and just pretend like I was working the like working out. Because don't get me wrong, he was fit before, but now he's just fucking hella, like, strong now. And he's, like, muscly as fuck. So, you know, like, like world's strongest bodybuilders, all might ain't got nothing on this man. Nah. He's got, like, Escanor's bod. You know, during the day, if he wants, he can have, like, that, the one thing. But otherwise, he'll just have, like, bomb spills. Alright, but like a bit more since, you know, he's stronger than Bond. Anyways, so he decides to think about what he should do. And he thinks, well, I guess I can definitely be a hero now <laughs> since he's stronger than every single he hero. And, uh, you know. What are they going to do to stop him? So, yeah. Like, no villain in this world <laughs> can hold a candle to Deku. Alright? So, Deku, he comes back, and... Once he's in his house and everything, he's settled in, and he decides to just wear some baggy clothing, since that's the only shit that fits him. Because, you know, he gained, like, an extra, uh, like... Like hundred pounds of muscle you know his clothes ain't ready for that but yeah he's mature more mature than he should be at this age you know since he's like five years older mentally than he is physically and you know that's just awesome you know extra five years of knowledge anyways so Deku He's getting ready, uh, you know, and he heard the door open, and he's like, baggy clothes time, and, you know, he put them on, and, uh, he's like, all right then. He goes, and he starts to make food in the kitchen, and Inko sees him, and she thinks something's off, but she can't put her finger on it, so she just lets it go by. She's like, is he more muscular than before? I can't tell. Eh, whatever. You know. So she asked how his day was, and he said it was very eventful. Uh, very good, you know. And she was like, oh, that's good. And Deku was like, yep. And, uh, yeah. So he's ready to go, and yeah. He's basically already at this point, he's just not comparable to anything on this planet. Like, he's worth more than a thousand All Might in his prime, alright? He's just fucking OP as hell, alright? Nothing on him. Anyways. So Deku, he's just getting ready, you know, for uh, school the next day. Since, you know, she didn't notice. Hopefully no one else does. And, uh, so he goes. And, uh, yeah. He walks to school, and he's in a very good mood since, you know, no one can really pick on him now. You know, but they might as well just be flies. You know? Like, especially during the day. If he ask activated Escanor's ability, he could just melt the entire, like, an entire city block from him more than that if you really tried but you know I'm just saying all those bullies insignificant flies at this point cause Deku's OP my guy like he's the strongest being on the planet at the moment but yeah so he gets to school and Bakugo tries to bully him as per usual and Deku he just smiles with the most shit eating grin and just walks on by and Bakugo gets annoyed and he tries to explode Deku's back 
and Deku, he just punches Bakugo in the face. And, and keep in mind, he is holding back quite a bit, so he doesn't break any of Bakugo's bones. But Bakugo, he's like on the ground, asleep. Like, he couldn't even fire off the explosion. And Deku's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he got that coming to him. You know what I mean? So, yeah. He's basically just OP now. There's no better words to put at it. So, yeah. He's just smiling and walks into class just like, mm hmm. New day, new me. You know, five years of experience in combat. Because don't get me wrong, he wasn't just training, there was fights, you know. I wasn't going to cover them because, you know, if I went over every single event in the Seven Deadly Sins, holy shit, that would take forever. Like, really? But yeah. So, Deku, he decides to just go and just enjoy his life, since that's all he really needs to do now. You know, help people when he can, and, you know, all that. And, uh, he can even alter memories of people, so he can just, you know, shoot uh, the uh, nightmare arrows if he wanted at people, but he just rewrites their memories of the people that saw him punch Bakugo and Bakugo himself, it, except for Bakugo. You know, he wants Bakugo to know he, who he's fucking with, but no one else to know why he's scared of him. And, you know, because he thinks it'd be funny, and uh, he's not wrong. So, Bakugo is now scared of Deku. You know, after he woke up, after like an hour. And he comes to class, like, late and with a bloody fucking nose. And, uh, you know, the teacher's just like, where the fuck were you? And Bakugo says, I'm not gonna tell Why should I tell you? And the teacher's like, whatever, because he doesn't really care. You know, Bakugo's a delinquent, or, you know, acts like it. So, who cares? But, yeah. So... Yeah. So Deku, he walks into, he's been in class for an hour, and Bakugo walks in and gives him the dirtiest look ever, and but and uh, Deku, he he just gives him this even wider smile, like you would be impressed about how wide he's smiling. He's giving Bakugo the most shit-eating grin possible. I mean, this man is pissed. And he wants to go blow up Deku, but he knows he's going to get punched in the face again. Because screw him. But yeah. So, Deku is just like, mm-hmm, what you going to do about it? And yeah. So he goes home, and the bullies were like, you know, Bakugo, let's go get Deku. And he's like, no, we're not doing that. Actually, no, 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 no. Bakugo's like, yeah. You know, he's like, he just got to jump on me before, you know. I wasn't expecting it, you know, that's why I lost. Not because I'm a fucking weakling, you know, pretending to be stronger than I am. You know, because Deku is, like, stronger than, you know, Bakugo's cocky little fuck. So, yeah. So, Deku, he's walking home, and the group tries to ambush him. And Deku, this time, he decides not to rewrite memories. He just punches them all. You know, he gives each one of them a look. And, uh, he activates, like, 0.1% of his power. Alright, 0.1% of his power. And just lets that presence leak just a little bit, you know. And then they're, like, scared as shit. And he increases it times 10, you know, going up to 1%, and then they fucking pass out. He chuckles, and then re goes back to his restrained power of 0 .001, you know, so that way he, you know, like, uh, All Might, he's at, like, 0.1% of his power, 
But, like, even All Might's presence couldn't, like, knock people out and scare the shit out of them. But, you know. But 1%, you know, 10 times All Might and with malicious intent. Now, that, that would knock people the fuck out. And if he went all out, like, he could kill people with his, like, just by a look. Like, if looks could kill, yeah, his looks can kill. You know. And, uh... Oh, yeah, did I forget to mention, uh, this man, yeah, he's built now, you know, yeah, he's looking, uh, pretty good, you know, getting all the girls' attention now, since, uh, you know, that also did happen to him, you know, he looks a little bit more mature now as well, so, yeah, getting all that, uh, that power, you know, is, uh, also doing something for his looks, in uh, that department and uh, yeah so all the blues are just on the ground and Deku just walks past them like mm mhm we'll time skip it here and then we'll go you know Deku's walking home again the bullies well they learned their lesson let's say that alright nothing else needs to be said they just learned where they should and shouldn't be sticking their noses. And Deku was one thing they shouldn't, you know, well, one person they shouldn't be aggravating. If you know what I'm saying. Because he'll beat the shit out of them any day of the week, you know. If they start the fight, well, he's got no problem with fighting back. <laughs> and he'll win every damn time. So, yeah. He's just walking along happily and you know it's it was the last day of school and it's now 10 months till the ua entrance exam and he's walking home and uh a sludge villain uh comes out of the drain and and deku looks at this thing like (laughs) oh my god this thing is this thing is pathetic and Deku looks at it like, you need something. Because, you know, he, he already knows this is the villain. And the villain says, yeah, your body. And, and, and Deku's just, like, over here. He's like, yeah, I'm not into that. I don't swing that way, man. Like, it's cool that you you are the way you are, man. But, you know, I'm not into that. So you can just, you know, find someone else. I'm uh, really not into that. Also, I'm not even 18, so... You should, you should really go find someone 18 that's into that, you know, and he shoots him away, and the sludge villain's, like, pissed off, like, I didn't mean it like that, man, why do you make it sound weird, and Deku's like, I don't know, it sounded kind of weird, and, uh, Deku then gave him this, uh, death stare, and said, what, did you mean that you wanted to take over my body and fight or something? And he's like, and the sludge villain's like, hell yeah. Because Deku wasn't releasing any of his aura. He was just, he was just giving him a look. The sludge villain hesitated for a bit, you know, like, what the fuck is that look? But, you know, he's just a kid, so he can't do anything to me, right? And uh, Deku, at this point, he's stopped wearing the baggy clothing, so you can see his muscles. It's not like he's wearing extremely tight clothing, but, you know... He's, you can just see the muscles regardless. And he's like, he he probably has some muscle enhancement quirks, so it's fine. Muscles won't do anything against me, you know. And Deku then freezes him using one of Merlin's spells, just laughing his ass off. And then All Might comes, and Deku's like, "Mm -hmm. oh, All Might, were you chasing this guy? Were you chasing this clown? And All Might says, uh, yeah, thanks for catching the villain, uh, but you shouldn't use your quirk on him. And, uh, Deku's like, "Mm mm-hmm. Well, he did try to attack me first, so I think it was, uh, acceptable. And, uh, he's like, all right, then. And, uh, Deku's like... He looks at, uh, All Might with, uh, something that Merlin also gave him during his time there. You know, that thing that she gives to Hawk that allows, you know, 
uh, you to see someone's stats, basically gives people stats, assigns them numbers, and he sees All Might's power level is at about, uh, we'll say, 2,000, all right, since keep in mind, like, uh, Meliodas's was only a few thousand in earlier parts of it, till he got his main power back, and then uh, died, and then got that demon shit. Don't worry about that, though. Uh, but, yeah. So, 2,000 is actually pretty damn high. You know, most Holy Knights and Leonis would only have, a, like, 1,000 on the higher end. You know, 1,000 some on the higher end. And, uh, Yeah, actually, we'll give him a power level of 4,000, all right? So, you know, all my... But Deku, at this point, his power level is over 100,000 if he maxes, you know, out. He maxes out in the millions. So he's... He, he might as well be a freaking god at this point, all right? Don't get me wrong. But, you know, if he went all the way into the millions... It would cause some severe, severe backlash. You know, the most he'd go to without being hurt is a couple hundred thousand. You know, and past that, there would be some bad backlash. But yeah. So, Deku, he's like, alright then. And, uh, you know, he's just going along with whatever. And All Might's just like, wow. So you have an ice quirk, right? Deku's like, um, among other things, yeah. And All Might's like, what? Thinking, among others, this kid has multiple quirks. Does he work with all for one or something? And Deku's like, well, I have a bunch of powers. I like to call it magic as my quirk. But, you know, ice isn't really my quirk. It's just, like, part. It's an ability of my quirk, if you get what I mean. And uh, All Might's like, oh. And, yeah. So, he's like, all right, then. And Deku's just like, yeah. So, they go. So, Deku goes home, and All Might takes the sludge villain in after, you know, Deku and freezes him. Since Deku's not a fanboy or anything, since he's way stronger than All Might now, he, uh, you know, doesn't give a shit as much, you know? And, yeah. So Deku, he's, uh, he's gone home, and after he turned the corner, he teleported home, since, you know, that day was eventful enough. And he was at home, looking at the news, and his mom was still out working, but, uh, he turned on the news and saw Bakugo, and he's like, ugh. Like, oh my, why'd you have to drop this thing, bro? And Deku, he goes, he puts on, like, a mask type thing, and he goes, and he teleports onto a building on top, not far from it, and he just freezes the entire thing, but not Bakugo, and Bakugo, you know, he then gets ripped out by Deku, and Deku, keep in mind, is wearing, like, a mask and shit so no one can see him, you know, he doesn't want nobody knowing what is, you know, who he is, because technically it's not legal to use his quirk, and he's pretending like his abilities are quirk, but, you know, well, whatever, technically it wouldn't be illegal, but technically, whatever. It doesn't matter. So, yeah. Deku, he's... Uh, he's been, uh... You know, he's just done what he's done. Freeze the thing and then left. And then, you know, they're like, well, uh, okay then. You know, the press instantly, after he was done, tried to, like, run, like, sprinting towards him, like... Can we get an interview? Who are you? Are you new a hero? You know, like what you know, a bunch of different shit and it's like he's just like, yeah, I'm a I'm a go. I don't I don't need this. Nah. Like, no thank you. 
I'm, I'm just good. I don't, I don't need this shit. And he dips. And after that, uh, All Might did recognize the ice, and he's like, oh, that kid again. And, uh, you know, he's like, wow, that kid's strong. And Deku just teleported home after that, and it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to be caught or nothing. Because that's, like, way, way not worth it. Since, you know... He doesn't really want to be caught illegally, quote-unquote, using his quote-unquote quirk. But yeah, so he just doesn't say anything about it. But Bakugo, he recognized his, you know, the clothes he was wearing, you know. And so, Deku, oh, well, Bakugo, he knew who it was, and All Might, he knew who it was, and that was it. Only ones that knew anything about it. And Bakugo refused to talk, and All Might wasn't interviewed about Deku, because, like, why would he? So, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, the ten months pass by. He ends up finding Dagobah Beach during this time, and cleaning it up just for fun. You know, it takes him a grand total of, like, 20 minutes. Since, like... He just used King's ability to move the shit around and then crush it into a small little ball. Then he put the ball in a storage area in case he needs something hella heavy. You know? And, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Deku, he's just like, alright then. And he ended up just hanging out at the beach for the rest of the day and training a little bit. He can't do anything too too uh, extreme for training, though, because shit would happen. But he can maintain his strength without having to do anything extreme, you know. But, yeah. So, Deku, during the 10 months, he picked up how to use a bow staff since he was bored and needed something to do. He then created himself a bow staff using magic and a few materials. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, did I mention he knows how to make a bow staff? Mm, yeah. But he typically just uses, you know, he has one that's just for, like, practice made out of metal. But if he used one in a fight, it would either be uh, part of the spirit spear chastity form. He has a form of that. Uh, he could make it out of desk darkness, like Meliodas. He could make a weapon out of it. So, you know, he can manipulate it to make a bow staff. Or, yeah. Or he could make it out of, like, the shit Gother uses, but that wouldn't really be for combat. That would just be, you know... That would just be uh, for... If you were like, well, it could be used for combat, but like, it would just be like an uh, arrow that he uses, but it could just be a bow staff. But yeah. So yeah, that's what he has for bow staff. And uh, yeah. So that's what Deku would do with it. Uh, yeah. So the 10 months are up, and Deku. Uh. He's getting ready to train. Well, he, he's pretty much getting ready for the exam. You know, the morning before, he's like, Alright, gotta wake up now, get there then. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. Like, I'll actually walk there, because it'd be a little weird if I teleported. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Deku, he's kind of OP now. Well, I mean, more than kind of, but yeah. So, he goes to UA, and yeah. He goes in, and uh, yeah. Once he walks in, uh, he sees a bunch of other applicants. He decides to not bother interacting with them. 
and that he'll just meet his classmates when, you know, the first day of UA. And he just goes walking in, and he doesn't trip this time, because, you know, he's just uh, built different this time, and he's not as nervous since, you know, even if they didn't let him in, oh well, he's stronger than All Might, he'll just do vigilante shit, because they can't stop him, you know. He has no problem with that, but, you know, he'd rather go to UA and do it legit. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, Deku, he's, like, already, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but Deku, he's pretty much already passed, you know, in his, in his head. So, yeah. He does the written portion, gets all of them right. He, you know, since he's smart now, you know, Merlin taught him. If he was smart enough to keep up with Merlin, he was, like, really hella smart, you know? So, he, he passed easily. Then on to the physical portion. He basically, uh, well, let's see here. He uses his spirit sphere, and you know how, uh, King has his second form increase where like hundreds of knives basically are made Deku has that and he just swarms the area with them and one of them is enough to take out any of them any of the others so Deku's just racking up hundreds of points you know he's letting people get robots but you know only uh, you know some of them like he's getting most of the points himself you know but uh Nesu sees this you know, it's like, oh, interesting. Then presses the zero pointer button. It's like, how will he handle this? So Neku, he gets his, he brings them all back to one area, changes it to uh, form six or whatever. That's the sunflower one. I don't know what actual number it is. I think it's six for king, but whatever. Uses it, you know, it's sunflower. It shoots a giant ass beam, basically obliterating zero pointers top half like completely there's no trace of it and uh once Nesu sees this he's like what the literal fuck is going on here that kid definitely passes just for that display alone and uh Deku he just you know flies back you know he just flies around after that you know you know looking for people to help helping them if they need it you know, all that, and, uh, yeah, so he just basically destroyed that exam, and, uh, I think that's where I'll end off this part, but, uh, yeah, I'll hopefully add another part to this if I'm not being lazy, uh, lazy, uh, person, like I was for the past two months, eh, anyways, Oh, we'll make more of this later, probably.